What's up, Melanated family? It's Dr. Rick one more time coming at you uh, from the H. I hope that you guys are getting your week off to a great start. Uh, wish I was coming to you with uh, more uh, brighter, lighter news uh, in conversation, but some of the dark things have to be discussed, and this is one of those days. Look, uh, everybody understands and knows uh, how this stuff works. Click the like button, click the share button if you're feeling what I'm, what, I'm t what I'm sharing, what I'm leaving, what I'm sending, what I'm spending, what I'm planning. Look, click the like button, the share button. If you really believe in the work we've done at the Odyssey Project for over the last uh, what, 12 to 15 years online and what we've been doing for more than two decades uh, before social media ever took off, Look inside the description box, click the link, and give. Or give to the organization's cash app handle. Look right to it. Hey, um, we can get caught up in almost everything. For years, I've been telling you about the need for proper socialization. For, the, for years, I've been telling you about the need for um, uh, unification and collaboration in the black community. For years, I've been telling you about the need to actually have a specific agenda and a plan of action and that complaining is not a plan nor is it a strategy whining is not a plan nor is it a strategy for years i've been telling you that we get taken advantage of because we don't understand how things work and i told you that power yields to nothing but uh a fight with power to assume power and what does that mean you can't ask for power from the powerful that's never going to happen and i'm talking about all of this uh because uh last night in Round Rock, Texas, which is right outside of Austin, uh, literally a couple of hours from where I'm at, been there many times. I have, I have a client that actually lives there. Um, Round Rock, Texas, a Juneteenth celebration it ended in uh, a mass shooting. I'm not familiar with who the suspect is. Uh, I'm not making any speculation on race or motive. What I am saying is. Kevin uh, and his brother named Kevin and his beautiful wife. He lost his wife, and uh, this is a fr Facebook guy, you know, a Facebook friend, not somebody I know personally, but a young brother, seven year old and two year old. Um, and it, it, it's the fact that we're talking about this happening at an event that is supposed to celebrate liberation and freedom and power. And I could speculate a bunch of ways and I would probably be off because what used to be the norm, it will usually be an easy go-to to say some racist lunatic showed up and started shooting. And that may very well be the case. I haven't been able to get anything off of it. I just saw the post and it really broke my heart. But what I can tell you when I think about Juneteenth is, you know, I look at all the, the people who are complaining about the fact that more white people are getting off on Juneteenth, you know, uh, for Juneteenth. I guess that's today. I don't know what day it's supposed to celebrate. This has been made a national holiday. Uh, now, now, what's funny is this thing originated in Galveston. It originated in Texas. It was a Texas thing for the longest. And then other people, other blacks around the country caught a hold to it as Texans began to disperse and uh, it began to be communicated. Then it became a real big thing once social media hit and people forgot to find out about it because it was really a Texas thing, Juneteenth celebration. Uh, and even the Juneteenth uh, Monica comes from a play on, you know, uh, slaves of that time and their pronunciation of not being able to say June 19th clearly or whatever. And all that's great. And now we're complaining because something that we used to hold dear to us is now being exploited and used and, 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 and people are benefited on it. The very people that we complain are the problem. The very people we complain benefited from that slavery are now benefited from the holiday. Why? Because we don't understand how things work. We think everything belongs in front of everybody. We think that everything needs to be legitimized by the government. We think that everything has to be validated by them and then legitimized by the government. We weren't happy until 
they were celebrating Dr. King's birthday and that came with all of them benefiting from it too because they cannot just make it for us because then that would work against the whole discrimination thing. So then we sit up and say, well, we didn't learn our lesson with Dr. King. So you know what? We want Juneteenth to be a national holiday. Okay, that's great. But being a national holiday means that any buildings and businesses that close will also benefit your white counterparts. Me personally, I care less what white people are doing when they are not doing things that are moving against us. I'm more concerned with the systemic uh, institutions and the machinations and mechanisms at play that work against my people on a uh, conglomerate level and any individual infractions that may be happening that's hurting my people. If they happen to get a day off, I could care less about that day off. What I do care about is the fact that we look at the symbolism and we've lost it because it's not ours anymore and we're frustrated because now they're jumping around and benefiting from the fact that we were once slaves of many of their ancestors and now we are free and they get to celebrate it like we get to celebrate it um, and because we're so into symbolism it is a major issue to us. I'm not real big first of all into symbolism. Symbolism has to be anchored in some hope, some action, some force. Symbolism is empty when all it is is something to look at and smile about and be happy about. When it does not inspire a specific action plan or underwrite a particular goal or aspiration. Symbolism is empty when there isn't something that follows that symbolism that actually gives true meaning to the symbol. And that's what we're failing to uh, really show up, where we're failing and my heart goes out to this young brother and his family. He's got to try to now make this make sense to his children. He's got to sit up and figure this out on his own. He's feeling bad because he's feeling like he didn't, he took his wife out last night and he didn't get her home safe. And every man wants to believe that he can protect his wife and his children against everything and the truth of the matter is no man can because they're just these unseen unexpected things that happen at the drop of a dime and you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time but he's got to find a way to live with that but what bothers me is that used to be just some place that we dumped off to some place that was just us some place that wasn't some national push where everybody was invited and everybody attends and if you understand Round Rock you gotta understand that it's a probability that it wasn't just blacks there and I'm not saying that a white person did it I don't know I'll do a follow up on this and give more details into what went on this is not so much about the shooting as it is about our misunderstanding of how things work in this country and our need to be validated by people who have never held our interest into account. And now it's time for us to do for ourselves, speak for ourselves, act for ourselves. Stop asking them to validate things. We didn't need a national holiday. We knew what it meant. We stood for it. If you want to take off, take off. If you can't take off, it probably means you need to own your own business. And I am just so flabbergasted right now. There's so many things. This week is just going to be full of things we need to talk about. You're probably not going to like me much because I'm going to call a spade a spade, but it's time to have those conversations. Look, we could build if we want to. I've been uh, talking to a number of people about building family compounds. I just share with my family and it's a conversation we've had before about building family compounds and c collaborating and coming together and centralizing our resources. Uh, we've got to do that on a family level, on a community level, and on a racial level. Uh, it's how we're going to get through this level, this next phase of volatility in global economics. And it's immensely important that we understand the dynamic behind it. We talk about, we speak about things that have economic significance, historical significance, academic significance, and social significance 
um, as from a from a from a space of romance. We won't we, we romanticize it. Uh, Black Wall Street, uh, you know, and this and that, and we romanticize, but we never strategize. And that's the thing that we need to be doing from this point forward is creating agendas, creating things that we can align with, strategizing uh, and coming up with ways to make things happen, collaborating instead of competing. Those are the things that we need to do. Look, I'm going to jump off of here and try to unwind. I got some things I got to get back later and finish up, but I needed to step away for a while. But we're only going to be as good as we decide we're going to be by the actions we decide to take. That cannot be it. That's a truth that can't be escaped or ignored. And it's going to be up to us to make it happen. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, you have a great day, but we have work to do.